Hello and welcome to The Boot Room. Andy Warren, Stuart Watson here to look ahead to Ipswich Town's home clash with Accrington Stanley in League One. Stu, um, three wins in a row for Town, a block of four games against teams at the lower reaches of the table, nine points secured. The job now is to make it 12 from 12, heading into a, a run of seemingly tougher games. Yep, 75% of the job done from this block of games. Go and get the job finished, Ipswich Town. Forest Green, MK Dons and Burton, all put to the sword, all beaten. Got to go and beat Accrington now. Yeah, no no gimme, of course. Um, we know that in, in League One. Burton showed that in the first 20 minutes or so of the game at Portman Road at the weekend. There will be issues for Town to face, but um, it, it, it's another game that, that Town, if they've got automatic promotion ambitions, and they clearly do, um, have to have to go and win. Doesn't mean they're going to have it easy though, Stu, and there's bound to be some challenges to get through on the way. Yeah, I think we were talking in a podcast earlier that the days of kind of Accrington having a bit of a sign over Ipswich, I think famous last words have gone. They don't certainly don't feel like the same opponents that they were uh, two, three years ago for Ipswich, likes of Colby Bishop. Uh, Harry Pell having moved on, the, the big men up front that have caused some problems. Michael Nottingham, one of their big centre-halves, is injured. Dion Charles went to, to Bolton. Matt Butcher went to Plymouth last season. So a lot of their big players have been snapped up, snapped up by teams at the higher, higher end of, of the League One table. Um, Ipswich didn't have it all their own way at the Wham Stadium earlier in the season, but ultimately got the job done with a couple of late Connor Chaplin goals. Um, and they're down towards the bottom reaches of the table for a reason. Struggling for wins, struggling for goals. Um, and uh, yeah, as, as we said right at the start, this is this is another game that Ipswich have, have got to have designs on on winning if they're going to go on and do something this season. Yeah. Accrington come into this one having beaten Forest Green at the weekend, um, coming from behind to do that. Um, and I think we can probably assume how they'll set up in this game. They they they'll look to keep things tight and they'll they'll look to limit what Ipswich can do. But we've seen some signs from Ipswich in recent weeks and it's more more important to look at what Town are doing than what anybody else is doing. We've seen some signs from them in recent weeks that they're just finding some slightly tweaked weapons in the armory to, to get over that. And that and that's going to be important in this game and in other games between now and the end of the campaign. Yeah, I think so. This this will probably be a return to Team, a team coming to Portman Road and, and parking the bus, sitting low, defending the penalty box, and that has caused Ipswich some issues at Portman Road against the likes of Lincoln and Fleetwood and Cheltenham in the past. Um, I think Ipswich have mixed it up a little bit more of late. Yes, the, the passing principles, playing out of the back, getting to the byline, cutting the ball back, all of that remains for Ipswich Town, but there's just been a few signs that they'll, they'll mix it up a little bit more. They'll They'll, uh, they'll they'll go a little bit more direct and um, yeah, I think they might need to do that to uh, to pick the lock against that Quinton. Yeah, and and they'll of course have a a big home crowd at Portman Road, most of whom will be coming expecting Ipswich to do the job, but that's only half the battle. Feeling that you can do it, um, it's got to be done, and it's got to be done because this feels like before we get onto the Ipswich teams here, this feels like a really big week of League One football, doesn't it? With with Ipswich, of course, still hunting automatic promotion, um, will firmly believe that they can do that. Of course, they will. But Plymouth are in the driving seat; they're five points clear. Crucially, Plymouth are playing Derby County on on Tuesday evening, just as Ipswich, Ipswich are playing Accrington. There aren't many opportunities on the on the calendar where you're looking at, at games where a Plymouth team who have certainly been in, impeccable at home might drop some points and open a door. This would be one of those few, wouldn't it? And another at the weekend as well. Yeah, and then fast forward to Saturday, Ipswich, of course, go to Bolton in, in a huge League One game. And uh, Plymouth are at Barnsley, who are very much in the promotion hunt themselves. So this week could uh, could tell us a lot about uh, which... which uh, direction Ipswich Town are heading in. You look at the the latter stages of the season and Plymouth's uh, Plymouth's fixture looks, looks uh, certainly on paper pretty kind. So, um, yeah, you would hope that this week is one where Ipswich can chip away at those five points and uh, keep themselves very much in the, uh, the hunt for top two. 
Mm, an eye on home park for sure, but full focus needs to be on Accrington at Portman Road. That's where Ipswich's promotion uh, prospects will be made. It's what they do. It's not they can't affect what Plymouth do. So, so the boot room is about talking about the, what team we think is going to play in this game, and we've seen a settled eighteen now for three in, in a row. Um, signs that that will stick like that at least for now. Um, and if and are there any areas of the team where? Where you'd maybe look to threaten, freshen things up a little bit for a what is a three the middle of a three game week. Um, I think there will be some freshening up. Um, there always is with with McKenna generally, especially when it comes to Saturday Tuesday games. Um, three possibly four changes is where I'm I'm at having a look at this this team. Um, the first question, of course, is whether Leif Davis is okay. He limped off. Late on against Burton at the weekend, McKenna was hopeful post-match that it was just a kick and uh, he would be OK. Hasn't been an update from from him yet as we sit here sort of uh, mid-afternoon on Monday. I'm sure when he does eventually say something, he'll, he'll keep his cards close to his chest on that one. But um, that's the first area where there's a potential change. Greg Lee is obviously the man in waiting at left back there. Yeah, that's that. That'll be an enforced one. If Davis is good to go, he will go. I'm sure that he's a big part of what they do. Um, the other area of the pitch you have to look at is the centre of midfield. Again, it's an area we've talked about on the heading into the last few games. Um, we did finally see the change. We saw Massimo Luongo start against Burton, and he played very, very well indeed. Rave reviews for the Aussie in there, but the, the question marks against him are always at this stage down to fitness. Um, and whether whether Ipswich will feel like he can go again in this Accrington game, especially with Bolton on the horizon. So that'll be an interesting one. And, and I, I'm sure that, that Luongo will start the game at Bolton. So it, it'd be interesting to see what, what, what they do with him in this one, do you think? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, he's not played a huge amount of football over the last few months. Didn't uh, feature at all for Middlesbrough in, in the first half of the season. Um, they've been building him up slowly. Uh, is he? It will, will they think he needs to get another game in him before Bolton or will they pull him out of the firing line and uh, know that Cameron Humphreys is, um, is ready to step in as he's, as he's proven already on countless occasions? This season, so that's an area of interest in the team. Then we move to the front four, and there's generally normally some rotation in the front four when it comes to Kieran McKenna, and I'm sure they will do again. Nathan Broadhead for me is in the same boat as Massimo Luongo. A few little uh, fitness and injury question marks against him. He struggled with some hamstring issues, um, both at Sunderland and Wigan previously, has, has kind of been eased in by Kieran McKenna. Has he got three starts in a week in him? Um, not sure. I guess Marcus Harness would probably be the man uh, ready to step in and take his shoes on that sort of inside left forward role. Yeah, I think so. Kyle Edwards would, would fancy a shout there as well, but I think you're right. Um, I think Harness would be the man. He's been the direct change. Um, up top, I, I'd really like to see Ladapo go again. It doesn't happen for Freddie very often. The back-to-back -back, back -back games... Um, I'd like to see him go again. Whether that means we will or not, I don't know. But th that's what I'd like to see. Yeah, uh, although George Hurst is is obviously um, in the building and had probably his best game in an Ipswich shirt the uh, the previous match to the Burton one. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, Ipswich, in McKenna's words, have got two strikers sort of in, in form at the moment. Um uh, my gut feeling is, I can see what you're saying about Ladapo, but if you said, what do I think McKenna is going to do? I, I think Hurst will probably start tomorrow night. And then your guess is as good as mine as to which which one of those two then gets the game at Bolton on Saturday. Um, I thought Freddie was among several standout performers against Burton. I think he helps others play well around him. Um, I guess McKenna will probably look at Accrington's um, strengths how they're going to set up defensively and decide sort of which which attributes are best suited to this game. We shall see. As always, we find out at 6.45pm. Mm -hmm. Before we get to some predictions, just to finish off, Stu, um, let's pause to look at some key stats.
Okay, prediction time, Stu. Um, nine points from three games heading into it. Our town going to make it 12? You tell me. Uh, yes. Yeah, we, you have to put them down for a win in this one. Um, of the two games against Burton and Accrington, I was more confident about this Accrington one going in going into those matches. I thought Burton were going to be really awkward and uh, there could be some frustration on that afternoon. And to be fair, Burton were awkward and there was some frustration in those opening 20 minutes, but Ipswich were clinical and, and got the game done before half time. My slight fear going into this one is that the crowd turn up on a, on a cold night and are expecting a win and it feels a little bit flat and then Accrington could sit deep and Ipswich might get frustrated if they don't get an early goal and, and that and that creates one of one of those sort of nights but um yeah ultimately Ipswich do look like a team that's uh, in the groove at the moment have got some good relationships going on the pitch good bit of chemistry growing uh bit of confidence restored by these last results so all of that I think will, will carry them to victory where's the number put a, put a number on. on it um going into the month of March I'd put four nil next to this game I just think Ipswich's um squad depth comes to the fore for these sort of midweek games I think there will be a bit of freshening up as we discussed and I think um Ipswich never looked particularly weakened when they freshen up, such as the depth of their squad. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm hopeful that um, that it could be a night to uh, to enjoy. So 4-0. I'm going to go one less at three, but I'll, I'll take four. That'll be fine. Um, follow the game with us and um, here's to another three points to Ipswich Town. Hopefully 